Sirs, thank you so much for making time with me. And especially because not just getting a chance to talk about your career, but also right off the top, you're involved with a great event that's coming up, the first of its kind. Um, for folks who don't know, what event are you going to be performing at? Because this is something that with you, you give back in music and you also give back in time. For sure. Well, I'm going to be doing some performing at the Megan's Hug Foundation event. And I'm super excited about that because it's a it's just an amazing foundation. And what they stand for, I think, is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm always happy to, you know, be part of something amazing. When you found out about this, I mean, what were your thoughts? I mean, because this is the first one. Yeah. The very first. Right. So when they but, asked you to come and do this, and especially because it'll be happening at the Elmo Combo too, yeah. uh, historic. Um, it had to be something really special for you, especially because we're all finally really coming back together in 2023. Right. Well, I think it's a like a monumental event for them. Like it's the first one. So obviously it's going to be, it's going to be an amazing night. It's at the Elmo Combo, which is like a legendary venue somewhere I've always wished of performing in and being in. So everything about this event and about this night just spoke to me. And I was really excited to, you know, be on the team. Well, when it comes to teams, I mean, the Canadian music scene team, that is you. You have helped bring the city to of Toronto uh, known international and like so many great artists like The Weeknd, like Drake. You can throw your name in there too. Um, you. What you've been able to accomplish, I think, is amazing. You know, before we start talking about some of the amazing things you've done, the love of music, where did that come from for you? My love of music, I think, honestly, it just came from growing up around like lots of music with Barbie movies, Disney movies. I was very much a very fairy tale kind of girl growing up. And I feel like there was something about music and something about song that was so special to me and something that I really wanted to hold on to, you know, growing up and becoming an adult and entering the world. Yeah. But, you know, as you know, especially when you're an indie artist mm -hmm. and a Canadian indie artist, as much as there are artists out there who are opening up doors internationally, it's still not easy. Not everybody's getting signed. I mean, you have a great, and you want to talk about them too, which I think is great. You have a great management team who's really helping push that right now. Yeah, everyone that I've been working with in the last little while since coming off of American Idol and finishing that journey has just made my career like excel to a different level which I've been so appreciative of and I think it's really helping me find my own in the music world and kind of coming out of like reality tv so it's been uh it's been really special now now you know I need you to mention who they are the management team because I think this is important because they're connected with some really great people in uh, in, in fact a few uh, uh was it? a couple of guys who I've known for years who are great operatic singers. I mean, these guys are connected to them too. Yeah. So I've been working with the tenors management team, which is Jeffrey Latimer, phenomenal man. And Jason Applebaum, also a phenomenal man. They've been helping me out so much and, you know, just keeping me booked and busy and blessed. So <laughs> shout out to them. <laughs> you got to throw that out. And I'll tell you something. I was one of the first people, if not, I think they even said, I think I'm the first person to actually interview the tenors. So I remember oh. what it was like back then for them and watching them blossom. So watching what you're doing for me is watching the same thing. And you mentioned a certain show that I want you to talk about because that's when we really had the chance to see you blossom. What show is that again, please? American Idol, the one and only. Um, it was an insane journey. And I think American Idol is so special because, you know, it's basically the biggest singing competition in the, in, our, in the world, in the music world. It's one of the biggest platforms, biggest stages. So let's talk about here you are, an indie artist. You're Canadian. I watched American Idol from day uh, day one. I watched Canadian Idol when it was around too. In fact, I did a lot of interviews with the artists. So I was very connected with what was going on. And I've interviewed many of the contestants and winners of American Idol. When things shifted a little bit and they said, okay, we're going to have Canadians get involved. What were you doing at the time when you heard about this? How did you get involved? So with me personally, um, I didn't even know I could sign up as a Canadian or be part of the show. I didn't think that was a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was insane to me. So basically I got my start on social media as a lot of people my age do. Um, and the team actually reached out to me, which I thought was a joke at the beginning. I was like, there's no way this is real. 
Um, so I had someone from their casting reach out and be like, hey, you want to come audition for the show? And I, of course, I was going to say yes. So, you know, did that and ended up on the show and finished in top five. What's the audition like? Because as we are, as we speak now, uh, the new season is going to be starting very soon. So what is it like? Because we've watched, we've seen the massive lineups uh, from city to city. What city did you go to? What what was the process like? Because you got to go through a certain amount of people oh, yeah. to, before you even get close to the judges. Right. So for me personally, uh, it was really awesome. I got to do all of my, I guess, pre-auditions with the producers and everything over Zoom, which was oh. so convenient for me because yeah. I'm in Canada, right? So it was kind of hard to go back and forth and whatever. But um, as soon as I kind of got on that Zoom with them, it only took, I think on the spot, they were basically like, yeah, we're going to bring you in to see the judges. So within the next few months, they flew me out to LA. I went with my dad and I got to sing for the judges and it was insane. The amount of talent that was just in, in the area and in the room, it just got me so pumped to be part of something like that. Was there any judge that was intimidating for you? Oh, they all were intimidating. I, for me, for me, I grew up with Katy Perry. Lionel Richie was always in my house, like the music and Luke Bryan, you know, all my friends love him. And I hear like at parties or whatever, anytime we're hanging out. So I knew these voices. I knew these names. I knew these faces. So, you know, walking into that was, I didn't even know how to, I guess, contain myself and hold myself together. You know, the funny thing is, all three of them I've interviewed in the past. In fact, Lionel, I've had dinner with uh, years oh my ago. Gosh. So me. for me, the three of the nicest people in the world. So it's funny for me to hear you say they were so intimidating. But, and, yeah. you know, but as, as the competition went on and on, were they intimidating? Was the audience intimidating? Or were the other contestants um, yeah. intimidating for you? Well, my first, I think the first audition was the only time I was really intimidated by them simply because of who they are. Yes. Um, don't get me wrong. They were phenomenal. They were so kind and supportive, but it was just, you know, being there with such stars. And as the competition went on, you know, we got to, I guess, um, talk to them more and just interact with them more. And I feel like you start to realize that these people are human. They're not like, you know, they may be legends, but they're humans. They have feelings. They're people. So for me, it became a lot easier to kind of navigate through that life and talk to them and be around people that have created such a big name for themselves. Um, but the imitate the intimidation factor really came from, I think, the fact that people were voting on me. People were controlling my destiny at that point, and it was super stressful, but it was like a great stress. I look back at it now and I wish, you know, I, I wouldn't have changed a thing. What was your favorite moment? Ooh, my favorite moment. Honestly, I'm going to have to say when my sister surprised me in Disney. Yeah. Yeah. My sisters had never been to Disney before. I'd never been like my family didn't do that. We didn't take like a Disney trip when we were younger. So, you know, we never got to experience that. And I was doing an interview to the camera. And my sister just popped out of like a castle behind me <laughs> and I didn't know how to react. So my on camera reaction was so dry because I was like, why are you guys here? How did you get here? But that was definitely my favorite moment because I got to see their faces light up. You know, they were interviewed. They got to go on all the rides. They got uh, to, you know, meet the, meet the characters. It was, uh, it was insane. Just curious. Did you get a chance to be on Ryan Seacrest's show, radio show? I didn't. I did not. I don't, oh. I'm not sure if any of the contestants did. Ryan was an, amazing though. He's so cool. He is so cool. That would be a dream. Yeah. No, uh, love him and, and love the fact top five, correct? Top five. Yes. That is groundbreaking. So here you are, top five. What was it like knowing that as you're moving through the competition, here is your fan base growing too? Were you seeing it on social media? Because I know there are certain things you're allowed to do and watch, and there are certain things you're not allowed to do and watch during a competition. But once things were coming together, what was it like to watch your, your competition? I should say your, your social media grow and things like that. And even better still, what was it like for uh, people who, let's just say, weren't your buddies before suddenly becoming your best friends? <laughs> that is the biggest thing in the world. Let me tell you that right now. Um, watching my social media grow was crazy because I never thought, you know, even in the world where social media is like the biggest thing, I never thought people would like me in that way where they wanted to pay attention and follow my journey. And, you know, and I think that was super cool. And on the thing about the people being friends, that was also very cool um, in ways because, you know, people come out of the woodworks and they comment, they're like, <laughs> yeah, I was best buds with her in high school. 
I'm like, oh, I don't remember <laughs> speaking to you once. So, you know, it was super funny for me. And that was something that me and my sisters and my friends all laughed about, like my close friends, um, because it was like, who are these people? Where are they coming from? How did this happen? So pasting, pasting pictures of you and them. And you're just like, yeah, Wait a I'm minute. Like, what? <laughs> Where did this come from? <laughs> yeah. So here you are, uh, the competition's over. You get this great management. What were the thoughts now? Because you're on a high. How do you keep this going? Do you get signed? Do you not want to get signed? Do you want to stay independent and release music? What's the style of music that works for you? What were all these things that you were thinking about? Yeah, well, obviously coming off the show, it was like stepping into a new world now because mm -hmm. I'm completely just surrounded by music and music industry and all these things that I really haven't experienced other than being on American Idol. Um, so, you know, having a great team around me, again, best thing I could ever ask for because they've definitely helped me like learn what I'm doing and help me figure out life in that sense. Um, and there was a lot of questioning with like, what do I do now? Do I put out music? Do I sign? Those are all like very valid thoughts. Um, and I think right now I'm just kind of riding the wave and seeing where it takes me because that's kind of how I got on American Idol. I just, you know, I posted, I did my thing and it got me on the show. So I figured if it worked once, maybe it'll work again. And I'm just going to keep working keep going with the flow and keep doing my thing what do you describe your music as oh um I think it's storytelling I think I don't I don't really put myself into one category um I've been told my voice is like very emotional very I guess powerhouse diva ish um so I guess I use those use that to my advantage and just try and tell a story and communicate with people through music because I think that is the most important thing about being a musician is being able to tell a story and being able to connect and build a relationship. Are you working with writers right now? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of writing with um, some awesome people, some friends of mine, just all over the place. I'm trying to experience it all. Uh, songwriting is very foreign to me since before the show. Um, so now that I'm into it, I'm really learning and I'm trying to experience, you know, being a musician in the real world and trying to make it all happen. So yeah, it's been awesome. You you know, um, we it's been a crazy couple of years, you know, with COVID and things like that. And, uh, you know, one of the, uh, you know, if you want to say sad moments that have happened, of course, you know, us losing our forever mayor, uh, Hurricane Hazel, as we've all mm -hmm. known her as. I was lucky enough last year to interview her over at Zoomer and, uh, you know, an amazing woman. You had an involvement with her funeral recently. What was going on? Yeah, so I got to sing one of her favorite songs, or I think her favorite song, period, in the world, uh, which is Danny Boy, beautiful song. Um, and I got to sing it kind of to celebrate her and to celebrate all the work she's done and who she was. And it was a phenomenal moment, not only for me, but for everyone in the room, for everyone watching, for everyone attending. And I'm so honored to have been chosen to be part of that because I think that is something that will go down in history and that people will remember for a long time. No, it's interesting because usually isn't it a uh, guys usually sing that song. Yeah. How did that all come about with you singing it? How, how, what was the connection? Well, you know, it was funny because when I got the call from my management team that like, hey, this might be an opportunity. And they told me the song. Um, I sang that before, which was odd because, again, usually a guy sings that song. And I would sang it before just for like auditions and things. And I figured, hey, I know it. I'll put something together. I'll try and, you know, make it a little bit more Nicolina. Um, and it just turned into, honestly, one of my favorite arrangements of any song that I've done. Yeah. Do you not ever get, I don't want to use the term stage fright, but um, that moment of clarity of I'm doing something that is always going to be remembered. Meaning, of course, what you did on American Idol. The fact that what you just did here at one of the most important, if you want to say funerals ever, yeah. that people are going to remember. Do you ever get into that moment of how is somebody like me being able to do something like this? Totally. Every time, every time I stepped on the American Idol stage or even for Hazel, like I, I don't understand sometimes how I'm getting these opportunities because for me, you know, I'm singing, I'm creating music, I'm doing my thing. And it's, it's almost strange to me that people are reacting the way they do. And I think it's a beautiful thing because I don't, I'll never understand. I'll never be able to watch myself sing and, you know, be 
and have an unbiased opinion. So it's so cool to see how other people react and, you know, just where kind of like that leads me with my career and the opportunities it's given me. What can we expect in the future for that future music that's going to be coming out? And also, will you be, you know, hitting some tours, shows? What else are we going to be looking at? Hopefully soon I'll have all the tours and concerts and all the information out. I'm working on a few little things, kind of getting the gears moving. Um, but for that, definitely new music, just new music, telling stories and connecting with people and trying to make unspoken feelings spoken and, you know, make everyone feel valid in what they're feeling in the world. And of course, uh, when you're at the Elmo Combo, what can we expect from that performance? Oh, hopefully, hopefully chilies from the audience and, <laughs> you know, lots of emotions in the room. I'm bringing some, some pretty powerful songs that night. So I'm excited. Cannot wait for everything that you're doing. Look, before we wrap this up, what, um, what words of encouragement can you give folks out there? Because you are a true testament of not just giving back, especially with this big event that's going to be coming up, but also for someone who has, you know, traveled in ways a lot of people will never have that moment. And hopefully whatever they're doing, they're going to have their moment. What advice can you give folks who are trying to follow their dreams and hopefully they can continue and make it happen? Yeah, I would just say, honestly, take risks, put yourself out there and make sure everything you do is in keeping with who you are inside because it will resonate with people. And that no matter what the dream is, be true to yourself, take the risks, take the leap because it will pay off. It definitely will. And you are a true testament to that. Congratulations. I will see you at the Elmo Combo. Looking forward to this amazing event. Uh, looking forward to hearing that amazing talent that you have. And uh, looking forward to the amazing music that you're going to be presenting us in 2023. Congratulations and all the success. And like I said, see you at the Elmo Combo. Thank you. I'll see you there. <laughs>